There are two more concepts in addition to the CIA triad that you need to be aware of – authenticity and non-repudiation. In the digital age, information is constantly exchanged, and trust is a precious commodity. Whether you're conducting online transactions, sending sensitive emails, or sharing confidential documents, you want to be sure that the information you send or receive is both genuine and cannot be denied by the parties involved. That's where non-repudiation and authenticity come into play. Let's start by exploring the concept of authenticity. Authenticity is the assurance that the information or data you receive is indeed from the source it claims to be from. It ensures that data hasn't been tampered with or altered during transmission. In other words, when you receive a message or a file, you want to be certain that it has not been manipulated by a malicious actor. Here you can see the official and rather technical definition of authenticity. It's defined as the property that an entity is what it claims to be. Now let's move on to non-repudiation. The official definition is not easy to understand, so let me clear things up for you. Non-repudiation goes hand in hand with authenticity, but it adds an extra layer of assurance. Non-repudiation ensures that the sender of a message or file cannot deny having sent it. It means that once someone sends a piece of data, they cannot later claim that they didn't send it, even if they want to. One of the most powerful tools in achieving both authenticity and non-repudiation is the use of digital signatures. Let's break down how digital signatures work and why they are a prime example of these concepts. Imagine you have a document that you want to send securely to another party. You could simply send it as it is, but how can the recipient be sure that it hasn't been altered along the way? This is where a digital signature comes in. In this example, Alice, as the sender, generates a digital signature for the document she wants to send. This signature is unique to her and the document. The digital signature is created using complex mathematical algorithms and it produces a unique string of characters that is appended to the document. She then sends the document along with the attached digital signature to Bob, the recipient. When Bob receives the document, he can now use Alice's public key if we're using asymmetric cryptography, to verify the signature. If the signature matches the document and can be verified, it proves that the document has not been tampered with and that it indeed came from Alice. This process also ensures non-repudiation because with a valid digital signature, you cannot deny that you sent the document unless somebody else has compromised your keys. In conclusion, Non-repudiation and authenticity are critical elements in cybersecurity. They help us ensure that the information we send and receive is genuine, unaltered, and that the sender cannot later deny their involvement. Digital signatures serve as a powerful tool to achieve these goals, providing us with a robust way to guarantee the integrity and authenticity of our data. For the exam, you don't have to explain or understand how encryption and how digital signatures work in detail. It's just important to know that digital signatures are one way of assuring and proving authenticity and non-repudiation.